Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorot's Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the icon in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about my YouTube videos, self-paced courses, or my live online classes and workshops, you can click on the link at the end of the video. This is the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, The Colors of Fall. The photograph on the right was a reference for this painting. You can see that my interpretation is not a literal interpretation. I'm not trying to copy the photograph. I was interested in the shapes and the flow of the leaves, but I wanted to have a more expressive interpretation of the subject. Before I began my painting, I did a quick study on a small sheet of paper to experiment with some of the colors that I was going to use. And this is going to be the scheme that I use to plan the, the execution of my painting. It has some mauves, some quinacridone violet, uh, some quinacridone coral, some quinacridone gold, some sap green, a little bit of royal blue at times, and a little bit of alizarin crimson quinacridone. But those are the colors that I'm going to use to create this painting. Before I begin to paint, I'm going to set my palette up with the colors that I, I want to use. So I'm using some quinacridone gold right there, a big puddle of quinacridone gold. I'm going to add a little quinacridone coral to some of that to make more of a red-orange. I always like to set my palette up for the colors that I'm going to be using. And when I'm done working with that collection of colors, I'll clean my palette and I'll start again. I frequently clean my palette as I paint. Now I'm going to take a little bit of sap green and create a, a puddle of that on my palette. My palette is set up with the, the cool colors on the right side and the warmer colors on the left side. And I tend to mix my colors that way in the wells. That's some quinacridone violet and some mauve. So I have quinacridone gold, quinacridone coral, sap green, quinacridone violet, and mauve on my palette right now. And I'm just taking a, a wash brush and I have a light pencil drawing that I've drawn of the major shapes of uh, the leaves and the branches. But I'll add a lot of different shapes as I develop the painting. Now I'm taking a little sap green, some quinacridone and gold. I'm starting wet on dry. And I'm just dropping some color in around some of these shapes. That's kind of a red-orange mixture that's made with quinacridone gold and quinacridone coral. And I take my fine mist spray bottle and I'm just going to start to spray that color around and soften the edges, diffuse the color a little bit. And I'm going to continue this process, adding some color around some of these shapes, spraying it with a bottle, and then uh, I'll often blot it with a tissue. Some areas I want to keep more of the white of the paper. And I'm going to let this paint, though, just flow around the page. And after I've come in with the spray bottle, my, my paper gets fairly wet. So I, uh, if I transition from working wet on dry to actually working wet on wet in some areas. And then as I continue across the page where I haven't sprayed yet, I'm back to wet on dry. So right now I'm just trying to lay a, a, a light wash of kind of foundation of color that I'll build upon as I develop my painting. One of the things I have to be aware of and be careful of are some of the color combinations and how I position them when I'm putting this wash down. Because I want these colors to maintain some freshness and uh, I'm not going to be working with a lot of neutrals. And the, when you look at my palette, there's some paints that, um, when they mix together, could, could start to uh, move towards neutral, could, could gray down and start to move towards gray, start to get some of the red tones into the green or some of the uh, gold into the, vi the violet or the mauve. Uh, it could start to get some gray down colors. So uh, how I place those and what colors I let run into other colors um, can, are, are going to affect the freshness of the paint that I'm putting down once it starts to flow on the paper. You can see the paper is getting fairly wet in some of those areas. And the more I spray it, 
the, the weather is going to be. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to blot some of that color up because some of those shapes I want to be closer to the white of the paper. I'm not, I'm not really putting in uh, much in the way of dark values because I have a lot of water in this mixture. Um, but as I, I develop this painting, I'll start to develop some of those darker values. This is just going to give me a light uh, underpainting for me to work on top of. Here I've thoroughly dried my paper after putting the wash down. You can see how much lighter it is. And there's some areas where there's just a slight indication of some of the colors that I put down. Now I'm taking these same uh, colors and I'm just working with a, a round brush by the number six sable. You could use synthetic. Uh, it, it's really not uh, critical that you have a sable. And I'm starting to paint around some of these leafy shapes that I've drawn. It's hard to see the drawing. That's fairly light, uh, but I'm going to start to work around the exterior edges of some of these shapes, some of these leaf shapes and some of the branches and stems that are uh, part of this composition. So I, I'm letting my colors run together. I'm uh, using some gradation from gold to green to red orange back to red violet, and I'll continue to do that throughout. And here you can start to see, I, as I paint off that the exterior edge of that shape, the leaf shape starts to come forward. I haven't painted the leaf, but the shapes around it. And then I'll also come back and I'll soften those edges with the spray bottle. I'll use this process to continue to develop uh, the, the shapes that are the positive shapes that are overlapping. So when these when two shapes come together, you get an edge, and one of those shapes overlaps. There tends to be a positive negative relationship, and I like to play up the the exterior edge of what I call the uh, positive or the overlapping shape, and I I work around the outside, but I don't necessarily just want to outline it. I, I break some of the edges up. I let some of the edges get lost, um, but I give just enough information. To, to start to, uh, for the viewer, that they can start to realize what shape is, is there and is being suggested. And then you notice that I like to change the colors a lot as I paint this. I let these colors merge and then I'll use some water, I'll spray it, or I'll, or I'll just use a, a brush loaded with clear water to soften the edge and help diffuse that color. Here I have a little bit of uh, Conacrine coral. Put a touch of it in that wet gold wash that I had down. I bring some conacrine and violet and some gold. And I'll just alternate these colors. But in an area there'll be there'll tend to be a, a, a color or two that will be more dominant. Take some, some of the mauve and some of the conacrine and coral. And I'll put a little bit of sap green. I have to be careful there on how I, how, how I introduce that because those colors can definitely uh, create some gray tones. And I, that's, that's not what I'm after for this painting. I continue to work my way around the whole composition. If you've seen some of my videos, you know I like to develop the painting as a whole. Uh, I, I gradually build my values and strengthen my uh, the shapes. I, I work from larger shapes to smaller shapes and soft edges to harder edges to more detail. And here you'll see I'm just taking some Continuing with the same range of colors. I'll be using these for the whole painting and now I have a little bit of a, a richer mixture uh, Kind of a red orange using the quinacridin gold and quinacridin coral, but now I'm going to come in with some uh, I'll use a little gold here, but I'll, I'll come in with some water and 
soften this. You can see how though working off that edge I can start to define the, the shapes of those leaves. And a little bit more. So I don't, I'm, I'm not really using the, the reference photo at this point. The, the, I use that for my initial drawing. That's really all I used it for. Uh, from here on out, I'm just experimenting with uh, shape making and and just working with color and value to to the fine edges and um, it, it's uh, for me it's about edge development and then uh, working with uh, value value contrast uh, in, in different areas and trying to create a focal point and you'll you'll see me doing more brushwork and have stronger values harder edges in this top left quadrant which is really where I wanted more of the to be the focal point so uh, I'll do a lot of my brush work in this area and I have some of my strongest areas of contrast and now I'm coming in with some mauve which is really the darkest uh, value that I've been that I've used so far When I'm working like this, sometimes I'll, I'll look at a reference photo and look for some shapes and pull them out, but a lot of times I'm just creating some of these shapes. And here I'm just, I, I look to see what's going on in the painting, where some of the washes have been, and um, just some of the brush marks that I made that will help guide me towards some of the other brush marks I'll make. And, uh, when I when you make a, a a dark value shape such as this, I like to show that it's continuing on, and I'll use these to help describe overlap, uh, to suggest that there's something going behind something, or over top of something, depending on what I'm trying to do. You can see here just by working around some of the edges of these shapes, they start to come forward, and little by little, uh, the areas in between these, in this case, the leaves. Uh, the positive shapes start to recede and then it starts to push those uh, positive shapes forward. Now I'm going to introduce some sap green into some of these areas and uh, I'll use the sap green pretty much out of my palette and at times when I wanted to get uh, dark, my dark green in this, I'll add a little bit of royal blue to it. I use royal blue a lot to darken my mixtures. But right now I'm just using the sap green. And I'm taking some water off the brush to gradate that value down a little bit and soften edges. I'm going to put some of that green in a few few spots here. And now I'm looking for uh, another area here to put some of this green, strengthen it a little bit, because I want to distribute it across my composition. There will be some areas that will have more than others, and some areas will just have a, a slight touch of that color. Here, again, I'm using a spray bottle. I use a spray bottle quite a lot on these types of paintings. I like the gradation I get, I like the, how the color diffuses, and I like how it softens the edges. Uh, it softens it much more than just using a brush with water, I feel. While I'm doing a lot of painting around the, the outside and, and working in negative space, I also like to paint some positive shapes. And so here I'm going to put a leaf in where I'm actually painting the shape of the leaf. So that contrasts the, the negative painting that I have going on. But this painting is going to be very much dominant uh, negative painting. The edges that I'm creating are, are most often being created by working around the exterior edge of shapes rather than within inside the shapes themselves. But I am going to have some positive shapes. Here's another one 
where I just give the suggestion of a leaf and uh, I help define the end of an another leaf by doing it. So I'm kind of working with both positive and negative space there. Now I'm going to take a fairly strong red-orange mixture here. And I'm going to, to paint around the edge or off the edge of uh, like the branch that's coming through to help define that edge. And I'm going to bring some of this red-orange down a little bit as I spray it. And I want to define the other side of that branch. And, it, and not necessarily, I'm not going to outline the whole thing, um, but I'll have a kind of a, a, an edge that's uh, lost and found. But that kind of gives a suggestion of a positive shape underneath there. And I'll pick up a little bit of that color over here. bring some of that color down into some of the other areas of the composition. Just touches of value and touches of that, of that color. Next I'll do some similar brush work using more of a, a, a red violet, dark red violet. People ask me, how do you know what, where to make marks or what marks to make? And it, it's hard to, hard to describe um, the process I go through mentally when I'm, I'm putting these down. But, but really what, what I'm doing is I'm uh, normally trying to define an edge or uh, put, a, put, put a, a stronger value or a color in an area if I feel I need to distribute the color or distribute, distribute the value. Or if I, I, I want to sharpen an edge or help define a shape, I'll put some of these other shapes. And I'll also use those uh, dark values and uh, put them in different places to suggest that, uh, that there's overlap and something going um, underneath something. Now here I'm just going to take a nylon brush. And my paper is thoroughly dried right now. I'm going to take a nylon brush that's damp and I'm going to do some lifting. It's just very light lifting. Uh, I don't really have enough uh, of a dark uh, shapes on the, the painting to, to have much contrast for it to stand out. But what this will do, it'll give me some ideas on where I can create shapes. Because I've come in, I'm, I'm lifting, I'm creating some linear marks. And then in, in putting those linear marks down, I start to divide up other shapes and I also um, put the, the linear marks themselves in the composition and then I'll paint around those just like I did the branch to help bring some of those shapes out a little bit more. I cleaned my palette up and I'm because it was, it was getting a little uh, some of the colors were getting a little dirty they were getting kind of grayed so I've cleaned my palette and I started to remix some colors here and this is a uh, uh, a lizard and crimson and quinacrid and coral with a little bit of royal blue in it to deepen that color and I'm gonna start putting in some, some dark kind of uh, red uh, red shapes here and, and now the, these dark values tend to feel like they're receding they're they're in spaces in between these shapes they start to feel like they're in the background and they start to build some depth into the painting And I'll move around the painting and the composition as I have been the whole uh, the whole time to, to slowly develop the whole comp painting as a comp composition. So here's this value I just put. It helps describe the edge of that branch. And it stops right at the edge. And it stops at the edge of the leaf. So that mark helps start to describe the edge of two different shapes. And now I'm just moving around because I want to want to bring some of that value, some of that color into other areas of the painting. You'll notice on the right side I don't develop it near as much as what I am on the left top quadrant because that's 
uh, really the, the top left is really where I really want to have more of a focal point. So I'm not going to have as much detail or as, as strong a contrast necessarily in some of these other areas. They're going to be more of a resting place. Now I'm going to take some orange, red and orange uh, mixtures and I'm going to start to paint around the edges of the linear marks that I lifted with my nylon brush. So now they start to become more pronounced. So this is where taking that nylon brush and lifting some of these linear shapes help give me some ideas for some other shapes that I can create. And it, it just creates some other areas of interest and have these linear shapes that are going behind objects and, and sometimes when I'm working like this, I'll do some, uh, quite a few positive linear marks overlapping, but I'm not going to do that so much in, in this particular painting. Here I'm, I'm starting to work off the exterior edge of another leaf shape. And I'm going to take that color all the way to the edge of my composition. One of the things you need to remember is that your, 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 uh, the edge of your paper is part of your composition. You know, sometimes people leave their composition floating in space. They don't really involve the edges of the paint of the of the paper, and and the edges are are part of the composition. You need to give them some consideration uh, when you're developing your painting and your comp overall composition. Here's another area where I'm going to create more of a positive shape. I'm going to paint uh, a leaf here that's going to help describe uh, another leaf because I'm painting around the edge of that shape with this leafy shape. So that kind of the positive contrasting the negative. a little bit stronger of an edge there. So now we have more of a positive leaf shape. Here I'm going to take a mixture of the, the quinacridone violet and some mauve and I'm going to make uh, some, some dark valued shapes here on the, the left side and I'm painting around one of those linear marks that I made. But by stopping and starting on the other edge side of that, I help to define that linear mark. I'm going to make that a little bit of a bigger shape. I think I'm just going to probably fill that area in. You'll notice I frequently use a tissue to blot the paper. Sometimes I'm trying to soften the edge. Sometimes I'll just use it to break up a wash that I've put down and create some variance. It's just more interesting. Here I'm going to take uh, some sap green with some royal blue to darken that and then I'm I'm taking some of that mixture, that red violet mauve mixture, and it just to uh, tone it down a little bit. I don't want it to be gray, but um, it, it's less bright or raw when I add a little bit of that, that color to the mixture. Um, I just want to have a nice dark valued green there. And I'm going to just put some touches of that in a couple spots helps distribute that, that color, that value, and it helps to find some edges where I'm placing it. Just small shapes that I'm making. And I'm using a quill brush that I like to use for this type of brush work. It's a very inexpensive brush. Well, it's quite a bit of paint, but it, you can get a nice point on it and used at different angles, you can get a, get a lot of different effects with it.
I want to come in with some richer mixtures of the, of the kind of orange, red, orange that I've been using and define some of these shapes uh, a, little, a little stronger, a little darker value. So this helps build more depth into the painting. Create a lot more shapes. And here I suggest that this darker value is underneath the, the leafy shape. So every time I can create overlap, I do because it helps build depth into the painting. I'm going to add just a few marks here to take it to the edge of some positive linear marks that just help connect this to the edge of the painting. Just very soft here. Just, just very soft marks. Now I'm going to put up my little color study that I had to start with. And you can see that it's not exact, but it gave me some direction to go with the colors, gave me an idea of what colors to use, and, and where to distribute them across my composition. I'm going to put a mat on this so we can get rid of the tape and get a good look at the painting. And there you have my painting, The Colors of Fall. If you want to learn more about my YouTube videos, my self-paced online courses, or my live online classes and workshops, you can click on the Learning Center link that's appearing on the screen.